finessies and finessers. Andrew Martin is back. I'm gonna go get a few things for uh, the new little baby. I appreciate all of the um, the prayers, the thoughts, all as well. Uh, mama's feeling fine. Uh, baby's great. Uh, everything's awesome. So, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all uh, for your uh, prayers. Uh, you all mean a lot to me in my heart. Um, moving on to football, uh, again, thank you to all the finessies and the finessers. Without you guys, this, this, this wouldn't be anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, wouldn't be, uh, it, it, we would be nothing. We would be nothing without, without people reaching out to just grab the soul of another team and inject it into their team and the other team not even realize what's happening. This league would be nothing. So I truly thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being such good, uh, such good finessers and finessies. You 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 make my heart smile. Um, I've got my trusty little notepad. Um, got uh, no sleep, so uh, just adrenaline. So let's let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, boy, thank you to Cheese for doing the roundup this week. It was uh, is good. Very informa very informational things that just went down. Uh, we we've got a few trades this week. It's not as crazy as last week. Um, but it's, it, it's nonetheless it's crazy. Um, I guess we'll start with the scoreboard, the roundup. We have uh, Andrew beating Calder. If if that's a surprise to anyone, then <laughs> well you might want to recheck yourself. <laughs> I mean it's really. Uh, we have Gary beating Cheese. It was kind of a, a kind of a high scoring game. Uh, not the highest projected, but uh, the 138, 124. Gary was able to come on come out on top uh he had a lot of people just he had a, a consistent uh team effort uh cheese had a 40 spot from russell wilson uh, every new day i'm wondering if i should have if i should have traded him because that's kind of ridiculous um he, he might actually win mvp this year but that's that's another argument um yeah so gary won cheese and of all the people in this league <laughs> gary uh, Ow, <laughs> Gary Frazier, Gary. I, I, I don't get it. it it's 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 it, it, it's beyond me. But anyway, congratulations to him. Uh, he hasn't played me yet, so uh, that's a loss. But uh, yeah, um, we also had Alex over Evan. <laughs> Good lord. I mean, oh my gosh, it's just a, such a cute little pillow fight. I mean, it's so sweet. Yeah, they're both so cute. Um, yeah, even though Alex, of all the people in the universe to post high man score, I mean, the dude almost hung a 160 spot. He got, um, 156, which is, that's, I, Cheese is, Cheese and Zach Calder have addressed this, um, not exactly sure how it's possible to get 156 when you have, um, no first round draft pick, uh, getting any substantial help whatsoever. Uh, so, I mean, credit to his other guys for stepping up. Uh, not a fan of Alan Lazard putting up a 20 spot. Uh, it's not going to happen ever again. Uh, you know, he's he's an amphibian. He's not supposed to be on a football field. Uh, so, uh, we also had Skeet over Galt. I, I, I want to say this was maybe the – no, this wasn't the highlighted match. However, uh, Skeet was able to edge Galt by four points. Uh Luckily, uh, Justin Tucker was able to give him a couple points to uh, seal that victory. Um, unfortunately, as a Ravens fan, uh, Justin Tucker wasn't able to hit about 55 other field goals because Patrick Mahomes was too busy making Lamar Jackson his legal father. <sighs> I'm not even going to get into that right now. Um, so, yeah, uh, Patrick Mahomes, if... If Samuel L. Jackson wasn't his father, then Patrick Mahomes is biologically his father. Um, yeah, so, and then our other match we had was Scoggins over Clay. Clay was 2-0 and coming in this matchup, so, um, you know, Zach was 0-2. I mean, you, you think what might happen would be, you know, a 0-3, 3-0 at the end of the day, but Zach was able to pull it out, kind of, uh, Kind of able to save his season a little bit. Uh, he, uh, he, he, Tyler Lockett was on his bench. Probably could have got high man, even though I tried to get him last week. But that's a different point. Uh, yeah. So 
Uh, I mean, so I'm pretty sure the records, I don't have them on hand, but I, Andrew's two and one. I want to say Calder's, uh, I want to say he's on three. I'm not, I'm just sure on that. Uh, Gary, three and oh, of all people in the world, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it makes about as much sense as a Jay Gilstrap commercial. Um, Cheese, I wanted, I think he's one and two. A, a little surprising to me, personally. Uh, I mean, I hate cheese with a lot, like a lot of passion. I really just don't like the man. Um, but I, I mean, yeah, he's got a decent team. <laughs> uh, so it's a little bit odd. He's one and two. I guess he's kind of not got spoof fed, and he very easily could have been one and three, uh, or zero oh and three, because uh, Zach. Zach had him on the ropes. Zach definitely had him on the ropes, and then Darren Waller came in. Darren Waller was killing it that day. Um, so, yeah, uh, Cheese, I believe, is one and two. So, uh, based on that premise, we can go ahead and get to, get to, get to work, Cheese. Um, Alex, uh, one and two. Definitely thought he was uh, on the way to, uh, you know, the race to 160 uh, negatively, if that makes sense. Um, Evan, I, I can't think off the top of my head. I want to say one and two or zero oh and three. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, Scoggins, like I said, he's one and two now. Clay's two and one. Skeet and I believe Skeet and Galt both are two and one. Uh, so uh, we'll get to the uh, waiver wires as well as the um, uh, the weekly finessings. I think we had two trades happen this week. Um, not as crazy as some but uh you know things are a little bit different this week i i wasn't able to be fully engaged in my antics um i i mean for goodness sakes i had to watch alan robinson put up a 30 points almost from a you know hospital bed that was no more no bigger than a foot I mean, it was literally a foot bit i mean, it was it was terrible uh we did watch the falcons blow another lead uh I mean, it's really pathetic. I, I apologize to any Falcons in this group. I mean, it's really an embarrassment to the league. I mean, you know, it's you have Todd Gurley. You don't have to run Brian Hill, Edo Smith, and their distant cousins. You can just give the ball to the to the. I mean, this guy Todd Gurley was, and I look, I drafted the guy and I traded him off because I sent something. I sent something, and I went to the well and I I got rid of him. Because you, you just know the Falcons are out of line. Dan Quinn, second worst coach in the league behind Adam Gase. Um, now, uh, one of one of my colleagues in the group was uh, wants to bring to the light that Matt Patricia is also one of the worst coaches in the league. I, I'm with it. You know, he he's, he talks big games, talks about how he does this, that, and the other. Uh, oh, he was in the Patriot system. Uh, uh, uh. And yeah, and now he can't win a game. I mean, you got Matthew Stafford, not bad. You got Kenny Galladay, not bad. You got all these dudes that aren't bad, but you got a coach that sucks. Anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, sorry if you're a Falcons fan. Um, lack of sleep, all of you. Um, uh, let's see here, checking my log here. Hold on, you know, not trying to, not trying to die here. Let me make sure I get on this, get on this road safety. Safety first, finessing last. <laughs> Unless you're Calder, that's first. Um, all right, blinker off. It's a BMW, you wouldn't think the blinker would be on in the first place. Um, okay, so some of the uh, waiver pickups. Uh, we'll start with the fact I dropped Jack Doyle simply because Cheese picked up his backup and that means once Cheese picks up anybody, it makes anyone around him irrelevant. So whoever Cheese picks up then becomes irrelevant. So people who were relevant in the past now become irrelevant. Um, <laughs> simple, simple math. Um, I also uh, picked up T. Higgins for $16.00. Um, that wouldn't be the first time money was spent on him. He went to Clemson. <laughs> uh, speaking of college football, South Carolina's horrible. Um, like I hate Clemson. I Evan, you know, I mean, you're my boy. I'd I'd low key like rip you up on the golf course and the basketball court. But uh, I mean, it's South Carolina, we're garbage. Like, I mean, why is my guy let the ball hit him in the back of the foot? Like, my wife's over here trying to give birth and i'm just wondering like what's crazier the fact that a human can come out of another human or the fact that south carolina football 
can't know. I mean, they just don't know what's going on. I don't get it. Both are astoundingly bizarre to me. And the fact Gary's 3 0, that's also pretty bizarre. Um, so, yeah, um, Clay dropped Jordan Reed. Uh, that's a business move. You know, he came in, he, he did his thing. Uh, he did his thing, uh, got out with no concussions. Well, actually, I think he did get hurt, actually. But uh, he picked him up. He dropped him because uh, George Kittle's back. Uh, I also think uh, Debo Samuel's back. Uh, so don't come at me with no weak offers about Debo Samuel. Um, <laughs> all right, moving on. <laughs> uh, and Clay, uh, the, uh, the other roster move he made to drop Jordan Reed was picking up Kirk Cousins. Um, two things crazy about that. To me personally, one picking up Kirk Cousins at all. Um, two, he actually spent some of his free agent budget on him. Uh, he spent eight dollars. Um, I guess, I guess he wanted to, uh, you know, the trash in Cheese's neighborhood. It runs on Monday. Uh, mine, it runs on Wednesday. Kirk Cousins, <laughs> it runs every day, baby. It courses his veins. Uh, I guess Clay wanted some of that. Um, Gary. Um, Gary picked up Justin Jefferson. Uh, I think he has solidified himself as the number two out there, kind of replacing Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs is a valuable, he was valuable last year, so I don't think $22 is out of the realm of uh, reasonability. Uh, I, I mean, no, nah, yeah, I mean, that's, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I, put, I, I personally put down 16 myself. Um, so yeah, you got me. Um, yeah, and I think. Uh, oh, uh, Skeet dropped Trubisky. <laughs> Why would you have him in the first place? Um, and she's added Foles and dropped Daniel Jones. So, a bunch of really horrible quarterbacks right there. I mean, I mean, Foles might can help Cheese out. I, I know he's he's a little bit ailing at that offensive player position, but uh, he's. I mean, you know, Foles might can help him out. You know, a, a solid eighteen from a quarterback can go a long way. Uh, which Minshew can get, and he is on the market. Uh, so, yeah, hit me up at 1-800-MINSHU-MANIA. 1-800-MINSHU-MANIA. Um, all right, so a couple of the finessings. Um, I unfortunately do not have my clown music. Uh, that was all used in the debate last night. <laughs> it was interesting, to say the least. Um, moving on from that. Um, moving on from that real fast. Um we had a trade, I'm not exactly sure when it is, I wrote it down on my trusty log. Uh, this is probably the biggest one, uh, Skeet and Zach. Uh, Zach finally traded somebody. He traded um, Kenyon Drake and Terry McLaurin. So Terry McLaurin is a number one for a team that's never going to be winning a game. So, I mean, constantly throwing the ball. Dwayne Haskins can't throw the ball whatsoever, but a blind squirrel finds a nut every, here, every now and then. So uh, McLaurin is, I mean, I'd say... I mean, at least top 20. Hey, I mean, top 25, top 20, I would say. And Kenyon Drake, he's getting the touches. Uh, nothing's coming of it because DeAndre Hopkins is catching 65 balls a game. So, nothing really coming of Kenyon Drake, but the potential is absolutely there with somebody like Kyler Murray in that offense. Um, and then uh, Skeet dumped Chris Carson. Chris Carson is uh, the neighborhood uh, bicycle at this point. Everyone's had a rod. Um... So, and I'm pretty sure at one point, Zach, I offered you Carson and Allen Robinson for Drake and McLaurin, but this was when uh, Carson's value was being severely uh, disrespected. Um, so, but now that he's putting forth a little show, now they realize that, um, you know, Seahawks, they might put up 30 a game. They can't defend worth anything, but they're going to put up some points. Uh, they letting Russ eat. So, uh, I mean, I'm happy for Russell Wilson, happy for Cheese. You know, I mean, he's, he's been through it. I mean, the Seahawks are just not very good. He's He's been through it. Uh, myself, I've been through it as a Ravens fan. You know, I had Joe Flacco. Um, you know, we, we've all been through it. Uh, I mean, Alex had Tom Brady and his system. I mean, as a, I mean, it's just annoying to watch. So, I mean, we all have had – we've all been there. Uh, so, and he and Skeet also traded uh, Amari Cooper – Amari uh, Cooper um, can't quite really figure him out. They've got um, they've got Michael Gallup. They've got C.D. Lamb. They've got Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, the Cowboys a little bit like the Falcons. You know, they got all of these weapons. They got all of these weapons, but nothing to show for. They got all of these teeth, but no, but no arm. Uh, why they got all those teeth, but they honor him as uh, as uh, rest in rest in peace. Uh, 
uh, Adam Sandler would say in the uh, water bullet. Um, uh, let's see here. So that trade broken down. Chris Carson and Amari Cooper for Kenyon Drake and Terry McLaurin. So Carson, I'm going to give the edge over Drake. And McLaurin, I think I'm going to have to give the edge over Cooper. Simply because Coop, there's just so many mouths to feed in Dallas. So I'm going to say, yeah, um, that's an even trade. I can't even finesse it. I can't even say that was a finessing. Um, Joe Mixon, you suck. Um, wait, what was that? Yes. Okay. Uh, word on the street is uh, my uh, my four three day old daughter just uh, moved her arm, and that uh, that was actually more successful than Joe Mixon's entire Sunday. So uh, good for Ayla. Uh, not good for Alex. Uh, wow, he's horrible. He's so bad. Uh, and Gary, uh, Gary, a part of another trade. He's moving people around. Uh, We'll wrap this up here in a minute. Thanks for sticking with me on the day's weekly finessings wrap up. Um, Gary traded Antonio Gibson and uh, uh, Deontay Johnson. Uh, I don't know what Gary has going on with Antonio Gibson. He's got like a man crush on him, but then the next day he he's like trying to dump him off for uh, like common like dust bunnies like Joe Mixon. Like I don't know exactly what's going on with that. Um, so, I mean, he's not bad. He's not bad, but uh, again, you're in a Redskins offense that's never going to be bleeding clock unless they're playing the Eagles because the Eagles are horrible. Um, so, Antonio Gibson and Deontay Johnson for Rex Burkhead and Odell Beckham. <laughs> that's, that is good stuff. So, uh, Zach Carter just acquired Odell Beckham last week. Um, uh, Rex Burkhead was just acquired, requi uh, acquired off waivers. So uh, we have somebody that he wouldn't didn't pay a lot for in Odell Beckham, and he's not good, first off, and a guy he just picked up off waivers, who, mind you, is in a probably the biggest committee in the NFL uh, between Damian Harris, who's coming back, Sonny Michelle, Rex Burkhead, James White, rest in peace to his family, uh, prayers be with him. Um, for Antonio Gibson, who's the one? I mean, you know, there's a chance they could throw it up in the end zone, get a get a pass interference call, and be at the one-yard line. Antonio Gibson can score. He can get a touchdown a week. I think it's a reasonable thing to say. Um, and Deontay Johnson, who's a two in an offense, is not not bad. So, um, again, I, I'm, I'm going to have to say Gary got finessed again. I, uh, uh, yeah, because, I mean, Rex, Bur Rex Burkhead is far, part of, like, a nine-headed monster, and Odell's just not good. <laughs> um, and Antonio Gibson is not bad. Not bad, not great, but he's, he's better than Rex Burkhead. I mean, Rex Burkhead had one game. Um, and Deontay Johnson, who is, bet without question, better than uh, Odell Beckham. So, caught her. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's unreal. I mean, the last... I'm, I've had to clap for you two times in a row. It's very incredible. Very incredible. Uh, yeah, so that wraps us up here on the uh, weekly finessings and the uh, waiver wrap-up. Uh, it's, it's good stuff. Um, hopefully, uh, I don't think COVID will mess up anything with the games. Uh, if anything, they'll be played on Monday or Tuesday. Um, I, yeah, I think all is well with that. Uh, uh, so if Derrick Henry gets COVID, that'd be great because I'm playing him this week. So... Yeah, um, if, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and get into it. The week starts tomorrow already. Uh, already starts. And um, going into Sunday, got a great Monday night game. It should be, uh, it should be it, I mean, over under might be 70. Like, seriously, it's going to be great. Um, but, yeah, uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank you for Cheese for the weekly roundup. And uh, I just, again, follow Cheese on, on, on Instagram, hashtag Joe Mixon Carpet Lint. Hashtag Joe Mixon Carpet Lint. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Gary. Stop getting finessed by Calder. At Gary. Stop getting finessed by Calder. Guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me uh, vent. Um, I, I Again, thank y'all from the bottom of my heart about uh, the prayers and the congratulations about uh, my little girl. She's, uh, she's the best thing in the world. Uh, 
you uh, you other dads, I know you guys uh, agree with the same thing about y'all's. Um, but thank y'all. Thank y'all for uh, being a part of this league. Thank y'all for being so, being so engaging. It's the funnest that I've ever had. I mean, we've got an entire YouTube channel. It's incredible. But for now, I'm out. Keep finessing. If you keep finessing, are you going to get finessed? Finessed or get finessed? Let's go.